Okay, today we are still solving equations, but uh, today we are solving special equations that use grouping symbols. Okay, so nothing's actually going to change here uh, based on what we were doing before. We still have the same exact three rules in the same order. First, you collect like terms if you can. Second, you're going to get it down to one variable if there's more than one variable to start off with. And finally, you solve for that variable using reverse PEMDAS. Okay? Let's go ahead and look at some examples. Let's start here. We've got 25 times the quantity of 7 plus x equals 300. Okay, well, let's check. Can we combine like terms? No, nothing over here. No, nothing over here. Okay, get it down to one variable. Already done. We just have this one x. No other x's anywhere up here. So we need to use reverse PEMDAS, or as we like to say, SADMET, right? Now you might want to say that the first thing we need to get rid of is the 7 because it's being added to x. But hold on, okay, that's our change for today. This is inside the parentheses, and according to SADMAP, parentheses come last. So the very last thing we're going to do is anything that's in the parentheses. The first things we're going to do are the things outside parentheses. There's only one thing outside parentheses, and it's this 25. And you've got to ask yourself, what's the 25 doing to everything in parentheses? It's multiplying. So in order to get rid of it, we are going to have to divide. So we're going to divide by 25 over here. And if we do it to this side, we've got to do the same thing over here, divide by 25. All right, 25 divided by 25 makes this go away. And we're left with 7 plus x equals 25 is going to go into 300 12 times. Okay. Well, now we've done everything outside the parentheses, so now we can finally go ahead and look at what's inside the parentheses. In fact, we can just go ahead and get rid of or ignore these parentheses now that we've done everything on the outside. All right, we've got 7 plus x equals 12. That's pretty easy for us to solve. We need to get rid of the 7, so we're going to subtract 7, subtract 7, and we get x equals Five. x equals 5. And there we have it. There's our answer. Okay, so there's probably uh, some an easier level example of problem you might see in your homework. Let's look at another one. n plus 2 over 3 plus 11 equals 15. Okay. Now, hold on a second. You're saying, I know what you're saying. You're saying, Mr. Reed, there are no parentheses up here. There's no grouping symbols. Well, hold on a second. Remember when we learned how to do this way back in sixth grade, we said that basically it's kind of as if anytime you have things separated by this fraction bar, it's as if you have invisible parentheses around them. So even though we don't actually see parentheses there, we treat it as if there are parentheses around that stuff that's on top. Okay, so now that we see that, go ahead and do all of our checks. Can we combine like terms? No. Now we do have like terms here. We've got a 2 and an 11. But the 2 can't be combined with the 11 right now because the 2 is caught up in this parentheses and it's being divided by 3. All kinds of things are happening to this 2 that we cannot combine it with 11 right now. So no, we can't combine like terms for the moment. Um, and we are, we are down to one variable. So let's go ahead and use reverse PEMDAS. Okay. Um, first thing we're going to do in this case, since this stuff's in parentheses, this comes last. We've got 3 being divided, 11 being added. According to reverse PEMDAS, we're going to take care of this 11 first. So subtract 11 from both sides. And we get n plus 2 over 3 equals 4. Okay? Remember, these parentheses are still around here. So the next thing we've got to take care of is the 3. It's being divided. We need to multiply. Multiply by 3. Multiply by 3. And we get n plus 2 equals 12. Now we finally took care of everything except the parentheses. So we'll ignore those parentheses. We've got to get rid of the 2. Very easy. Subtract by 2, subtract by 2, and we get n equals 10. All right? And there we've solved another one. Okay? Let's look at a third type of problem. 
7c minus 2c plus 2, all of that over 6, equals 7. Remember, when we've got all this over a fraction bar, it's like we've got these invisible parentheses. All right, so let's go through our checklist. One, can we collect like terms? In this case, yes, we actually can. I don't know if you see them or not, but they are right here. 7c minus 2c. Those are like terms. We're going to go ahead and collect them right now. So 7c minus 2c is 5c. So we're going to go ahead and say right, these combined 5c plus 2 over 6 equals 7. So all we did is just combine the 7c minus 2c to get 5c. Okay, still have these parentheses. All right, we've collected all of our, all of our like terms. We only have one variable. We've got to use reverse PEMDAS. We need to get rid of the 6 by multiplying both sides times 6. All right, 6 divided by 6, that goes away. And we have 5c plus 2 equals 42. We've done everything outside the parentheses. So now the parentheses come off. 5c plus 2 equals 42. Going to get rid of the 2 first. That's going to be 40 equals 5c. Finally, divide by 5. Divide by 5. c equals 8. And there's our answer. c equals 8. Okay, so now that one's starting to get a little bit more complex. I want to show you one more type of problem in this video. Uh, that you're going to see on your homework, and this is probably maybe the most difficult or at least the most complex. It may not be the most difficult, but it's the most complex problem that you'll see. All right, 4 times the quantity x plus 3 plus 2x equals 15. All right, well, just like always, we're going to go through our checklist of steps. Number one, can we combine any like terms? Again, you might be tempted to say we have this x and this 2x, but we cannot combine those because, again, this x is, it's like in parentheses prison here is kind of how we can think of it. So we can't just combine it because it's stuck in these parentheses. All right, so we cannot combine any like terms. Second step is we need to get it down to just one variable. Now, in this problem, look, we do have two different variables. So here's our first problem where we really have to do something to get down to one variable. Okay? Well, what can we do? I already told you this is trapped in the parentheses prison, so we can't just combine like terms here. Here's how we solve the problem. We're going to use our old friend, the distributive property. The distributive property means I can take this 4 and distribute it to both things in the parentheses, and after I do that, we've just kind of broken that parentheses prison around it. The parentheses will go away. So, 4 times x is 4x. 4 times 3 is 12. Now the parentheses are gone. Let's just bring down everything else we've got. Plus 2x equals 15. No more parentheses. They're shattered. Okay. Now we can combine like terms. 4x plus 2x is going to be 6x. So we've got 6x plus 12 equals 15. So here's what I did. I combined this with this. Alright, All right. now it looks like something that we can solve really easily. We're going to subtract 12, subtract 12, 6x equals 3, and finally we need to get rid of the 6, so we're going to divide by 6 on both sides. We get x equals, and here we have 3 divided by 6. Okay, again, I've told you guys you can just leave this as a fraction if you can't divide it. Uh, but we do want to simplify. We want to put it in simplest form. So we've got 3 over 6. You can simplify by dividing both of these by 3. And you end up getting 1 half. So x equals 1 half. Okay? All right. So there's, that's every type of problem you will see in your homework. Um, don't forget to respond to the question in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow.